All right, what's up guys? So today I'm just gonna do a kind of like a follow-up to my last video on ambulation. And uh, in my last video, I just kind of talked about like uh, how occupational therapists are kind of always getting in trouble for ambulating their patients. In this video, I kind of wanted to just address goals. So what are ambulation goals that occupational therapists can write? I feel like for goals, it's really important to um, just be as specific as you possibly can because we're not really writing OT goals for ambulation like physical therapy would do. So we're not gonna write a goal that just says like the patient will be able to walk this many feet. Instead, we're gonna be writing like functional ambulation goals. All right, so for ambulation goals, like you wanna be really specific and a goal that you could actually use for this is um, the patient will be able to walk household distances with supervision or a patient will be able to walk to the mailbox and back to their house and back to their house with their oxygen above 90 percent so those are just like a couple ideas um, and how you can just make ambulation like be functional and this is this is how you're going to be able to to actually ambulate your patients like in a rehab setting or a hospital um, because i feel like a lot of times patients in like an acute care or hospital they don't want to do adls or maybe like they've already like kind of practiced with you a few times but they still have like really low activity tolerance and there's other things that you could really work on to to increase their met levels so uh, a good activity that you can do like in acute care or rehab like maybe you don't have a shower or maybe like uh you've already done a shower with the patient, but they still need to work on these goals to increase their activity levels. So what you can do is just like working on walking throughout the facility, you could go outside and walk, and then you can, that can be like a preparatory activity for them to be able to walk household distances or walk to their mailbox, walk to the grocery store, walk to their doctor's office, walk from their house to their car. Like there's so many goals that you could write um, for just ambulation. Like you need to see if the patient can walk that distance from their bed to the bathroom. And maybe in the patient's room, the, bed, the distance from the bed to the bathroom is much shorter than the distance that they would have to do it at home. Figure out like what what met levels is the patient doing on a daily basis? Are they doing showers? Are they walking like long distances to their mailbox, to the car? Are they walk, they, are, do they do grocery shopping? Like you need to help them to return to those normal functions. And an important way to do that is to focus on ambulation. And I know physical therapy hates when PT walks their patients, but it's so important because this is like how you help them recover. And like, I, while I think it's really important that physical therapy works on gait and assessing gait, it's, it's also important to get these patients up multiple times a day if possible and, and to, to meet their, like, their needs and, and to make some realistic goals to actually help them re, uh, improve so they can go home. And for ambulation goals, you don't, it needs to be functional. It doesn't have to just be like the patient will be able to walk to their car with supervision levels because a lot of these patients will be able to do that anyway. I would say focus on like vitals. So like maybe you're gonna in, uh, have a patient walk the distance from their house to their mailbox uh, with with a heart rate under 110 or something like that. Or like I would say if, if you wanna make this uh, like realistic, like a really good goal that they could actually reach. Focus on vitals. So you wanna like a goal that could say, the patient will be able to walk this distance with, uh, with an oxygen percentage of 90% and, and above, or you could focus on their heart rate, but you could also work on their respiratory rate. Like you could record the patient's respiratory rate, and then your, your goal for the next patient visit would actually be to lower the respiratory rate and then see if they can conquer that goal. And this is all about like trying to improve their activity levels for, for METs so they can be able to take a shower, so they can be able to walk to their mailbox or walk to the kitchen and, and cook a meal. It's all about making these goals that are super functional for the patient. And we're not just focusing on lower body dressing and showering, bathing, uh, toileting. Like these things, I feel like these are good goals to have, but and I feel like like these the basic ADLs are, are uh, important to do like as your like priority list of goals to focus on like right away to make sure a patient can do these. But a lot of times we have patients that don't want to even do these like 
I have patients that don't want to get socks on because like my husband will do it at home or maybe like they don't want to do like a shower because they feel embarrassed. Maybe they have just like too many IV lines and uh, they're not like appropriate because maybe they have like a dressing or something like that that can't get wet in the shower. Um, there's a million reasons why they might not be able to get in a shower. So instead you can actually, you could even do write a goal for patient will be able to walk like a certain distance to increase their met levels to be able to take a shower. The goal writing is all about making it as functional as possible um, and then making the goal meaningful. So as occupational therapists, like we're not gonna work on a goal that's not meaningful for the patient. So if the patient doesn't wear socks, like you're not gonna work on a goal for like putting socks on. What you're gonna do with ambulation goals is I mean, if the patient refuses to do all ADLs, which I actually had a patient like this the other day who just didn't want to do any ADLs with me, the only thing he would do was get out of bed. And it was kind of interesting because like physical therapy, he wouldn't work with them at all and they had a, he had a hard time working with them, but he would work with me and I would just get him out of bed and we'd work on um, transferring and walking as much as he could. And I know this kind of seems like something you would do with physical therapy in a hospital, but these are like, this is functional, right? This is, this is preparing the patient to be able to do his ADLs. And in this circumstance, like this is the only thing he wanted to do. And so I feel like we got to make the client's goals like client centered and client, being client centered is all about making this goal meaningful for the patient. So if the patient, the only thing they want to do is walk, then by all means, like work on walking. It's all about doing what the patient wants, what's meaningful to them, um, to help them reach their goals. Because in the end, it's not all about our goals. It's about helping the patient meet their, their goals and their needs. And the cool thing about ambulation is the OTPF like totally backs us up. It's in our practice framework to be able to do ambulation. And it's actually an ADL, like functional mobility is an ADL. So I feel like if PT ever gives you grief about walking your patient, you can say, I'm actually doing an ADL. And if you have a question about that, I'd be happy to show it to you in our practice framework. So functional mobility, it's an ADL, and it's something important that OT should be working on. All right, guys, so leave your comments below. Like, what goals do you have for ambulation, for functional mobility? Like, leave them in the comments below. Definitely like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.